Welcome to your Yes Build Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle, educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes, filled life. Hello, and welcome back to your Yes, filled life. I am so excited for you to hear this episode featuring one of my mentors, the experience lead for Pause Breathwork, Mars Nickirk. Now, Mars is an experience lead for Pause Delivery. In other words, she manages all of the experiences within the company of Pause Breathwork founded by Samantha Skelly. Mars is a trauma-informed breathwork coach, integrative somatic trauma practitioner, international Akashic record reader, angelic Reiki master teacher and student and human design coach. She's been doing personal development work for the past 15 to 20 years and her mission is truly about guiding humans back into the divinity of who they are by bridging the gap between the spiritual vibration and the dense 3D reality. She supports her mission by merging body-based modalities with energetics. You are in for such a treat with this episode. And I want you to listen all the way to the end because I have a personal share that is foreshadowed in this episode that we recorded in February. And as I was listening to it to get ready to publish the podcast, I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, I cannot believe I knew that day that we recorded in February, what was going to happen later. And the thing that we foreshadow actually is happening right now in my life. So be sure you listen. Also, I'm hosting a free three-day challenge called Yes to Me. Now, if you have ever experienced the phenomenon of finding it easier to protect the time from someone else's events in your calendar than your own. Like for example, it's easier for you to protect your daughter's volleyball game than it is for you to protect your own yoga class. This is for you. If you've ever found it difficult to say no to the things you don't want to do because you're worried about hurting someone's feelings over your own feelings of not wanting to do it, this is for you. If you have ever thought to yourself, I really want to do that thing, but I'm just kind of scared. This challenge is for you. It's free. We'll be together live for 90 minutes each day, March 14th, 15th, and 17th. I'll put the link to register in the show notes, or you can go directly to brendawinkle.com forward slash yes to me, Y-E-S-T-O-M-E, all lowercase, all one word. Okay. You are in for such a treat. Get ready to have your minds blown. Let's meet Mars. Hey, Mars. Brenda, hi. <laughs> Thank you for being here. It really means a lot. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. I love to be I love to be invited. So thank you. Oh my gosh. I feel a little like almost guilty, not really, but a little guilty because I'm sort of like, I kind of just want to hang out with Mars for an hour. So <laughs> yeah. And I'm kind of like, let's just hang out. Like I really would love to just hang out with Brenda because that's fun. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for being here. here. Yeah, here together. we are. Here yeah. we are. Mm -hmm. So I met you 
probably in August of 2023, maybe no, had to be 2022. Yeah. Yeah. And what a journey. (laughs) What a journey. Holy. Yeah. Like, like, let's just let that land for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. August of 2022. It feels like, so I think of life in like this linear lifeline, but then Mm -hmm. I have these pivotal events Mm -hmm. that are like page turners for me. And Mm -hmm. so it's like the before and the after those page turner moments Mm -hmm. and meeting you, working with you is one of those page turner moments for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brenda, thanks for that. I love that you name like the linear I usually have a, a step right here to put my foot on and I didn't. I love that you name the linear with the page turner moments and that really lands for me. And what I love to refer to them as is they're like the pivotal aha moments. Mm-hmm. They're the moments that just like, oof, like there's something that lands in such a powerful and potent way that then shifts the trajectory of, of like where life is gets to go. Yeah, absolutely. That, that resonates with me. Yeah. So for people that don't yet know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do in the world? Oh, this is a loaded question. Who is Mars? (laughs) (laughs) You know, Brenda, one of the favorite things that I love to share is that I really have landed in the space of there's a human part of me that that knows that like labels exist. And yet for myself, a label in like my humanness doesn't feel like it fits at all. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's there. So for myself, I am a I'm a leader and I'm a I'm a self-led leader who then supports others in like really deepening into their leadership and the impact that they get to make in the world and the light that they get to bring the medicine the magic that is them um i am a i'm a coach i'm an akashic record reader i'm a breathwork facilitator and i also i'm a mom and i'm a daughter and i'm a friend so like all all of those things combined and the majority of my work that i do now i do right within pause breath work mm. Mm. it's so juicy i love that you name like there's these human labels that we put on ourselves And we sometimes try and fit into the identity of the label and it can be really confining. Yeah. 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 Thank you for doing that. Yeah. That was something that I really learned about myself back in 2012. I went on a very powerful um, journey through like a healing journey through actually getting sick. And that was, again, like one of those we talked about earlier, Brenda, like the pivotal moments, that was a pivotal moment for me. And in that moment, there was like a, a, a week of my life that I first looked at as like, wow, I lost a whole week of my life. And actually it was the greatest gift because within that week I received a coming home to me. Mm. And when I came home to myself, there weren't labels, there wasn't attachment. Um, And of course, over the period of like how many years ago that was, it's part of the humanness within each of us that, that we do carry certain level of attachment. We do hold certain levels of, of identity and, and labels So it's, but it's always like coming back to and remembering that each of us are just divine essence. Mm -hmm. Yes, that lands for me. In fact, I don't think we've never talked about this, but I had a similar experience in 2019 where I had a life-threatening illness Mm -hmm. that came on really suddenly. And as I was recovering in the hospital, I was like, I will not ever look at anything the same, including the labels that got me there. Cause I was like a hustler achiever, like workaholic isn't glamorous enough for what I thought it was like 
I was performing with groups and leading opera choruses and, and all the things. And then I'm in the hospital by myself. Somebody's taking care of the auditions. Right. And the, the knowing that the identity that I had hinged my very existence on could be replaced in a matter of hours was ground shaking. Wow. Brenda, thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, you're right. We have never talked about, we have never talked about this before. And one thing that I love to remind myself of is that yes, the labels come and go. The attachments are always ever shaking, ever shaking, ever evolving. And what's the legacy that I get to leave not even leave behind, but like, what is the legacy that I get to embody for myself every day? So that I just have this, like knowing that I showed up. Mm -hmm. And when you say I showed up, you mean like the essence, yes. the, this, the essence of you, not just that you are checking a box. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. It's like, it's like my whole beingness gets to show up, gets to show up. I remember, I remember vividly during that period of that week that we'd spoke about earlier, I remember having a conversation with um, my grandpa who had passed, who was on the other side. And I stood my ground and I was like, no, I do not need to go back down to like that physicalness of my body. Like I do not need to do that. And him saying like, you do. And I'm like, I don't. And he's like, you do. And in that moment, there was this, this really powerful visual. Mm. Okay. Yeah. This is emotional. Mm. Um, but this really powerful visual of this beautiful elevator. I use the word elevator because it's like a, a human word for what the visual is. And this elevator was like this beautiful opportunity to be able to go to the spaces and places of source that I needed to go, that I get to go to and come back down because my life's work is actually in the human form. Mm. And in that moment, I was like, whoa, I can surrender to this. I get to be human. And I had fought mm -hmm. being human and had a lot of resistance to it. Looking back, like in very early childhood, like some of my earliest memories are memories of like, there was so much more out there that that was like, that's what felt like home for me. Oh, same, right? same. Yeah. I, I didn't, I wouldn't have named it that way as a kid, mm -hmm. but I knew that I didn't belong in a body. Like right. that just felt like weird. And like, what is this body? Like, I don't even know how to control it. <laughs> like it does all these things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. One of the things I was having a conversation with about somebody today was she was interviewing me for her podcast and she was asking questions about being intuitive, contacting mm -hmm. the other side, being empathic. And mm -hmm. she was asking, was it lonely? Mm -hmm. And, and I leaned into that just for a minute and I thought, yeah, you know, in early life, it was lonely for me because I didn't know that there were other people like me out there. I just thought it was something that just I had. Did you feel that way? No, I love that you did though. I love that you did. Like, I love that. I love that that's something that was there for you. Um, because that becomes like just part of your experience. My, <sighs> there, this is like, there's duality in this for me. There were parts of my human that felt lonely, but I never felt alone. And the reason that I didn't feel alone is because I was so 
connected, so attuned to, so in different dimensions and, and intergalactical places and spaces and earth places that I was, I never, there was never an aloneness. Mm, I love that you named that. And so then it makes me think I can remember like being in my bedroom by myself, not feeling lonely. Yes. It was when I was around other people. Yes. That tracks, <laughs> that tracks, that tracks. And Brenda, I'm curious um, how this resonates for you. But for me, it was, it's a, it's a sensation of misunderstood, like, a, like, like feeling misunderstood. <laughs> I'd literally go to speak and people would be like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, that tracks, huh. that resonates. Mm -hmm. And what's so great now is that like, like human consciousness, human evolution, we've come so far in that these conversations are becoming more and more normal, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, but the experience gets to be validated now. Whereas like, for me, having my experience validated 40 years ago just wasn't, it just wasn't in my, in my um, upbringing, it just wasn't normal. Same, same. So, in fact, some of this stuff was scary to the adults. Yes, around yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. I love that so, so much. So juicy. I love it so much. <laughs> And you know, what's really interesting now that we're actually like on this topic and like the, the scary piece or whatever, um, is that when I first started, not even when I first started, I guess, when I really started to dig like deep into, um, my spiritual growth as a human, I remember doing so much work with like dark energies and dark frequencies because I was so curious and it had been so taboo when I was a kid to really go into those spaces. So of course, as like this adult and, and being in my own spiritual evolution and growth, that was what was the most intriguing to me. That's where I learned the most about myself, um, just about like humanity about consciousness like that to me was just the most amazing experience mm. yeah that resonates for me I remember like it would have been late teens early 20s and I was fascinated by the dark scary spaces where people you know could feel things I wanted to go down there and see what I could feel and what I could sense what I could see and I think a lot of my skill now in keeping spaces really squeaky clean comes back to the learning that happened when I didn't have the discernment to know what was actually in my best interest right yes yes and at the same time, those were like really some of the most powerful moments of my life. Absolutely. Yeah. The recognition that there's more out there and it, it was like almost easier proof. Yeah. 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 It, it supported me in helping make sense of the nonsense. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That, that resonates for me too. Mm -hmm. So when in your journey, did you become an Akashic records reader? Was that something that you were naturally doing? Yeah, it was. I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Like I had, I had no idea that that's what I was doing. Um, I first started in the records in like between 2006 and 2008, somewhere in there is where I was like recognizing like, whoa, um, this is something that feels different um, than what any other person that I've had communication with has expressed to me. So 
that would have been like my first intro. And then my intro just kind of kept growing and growing. And I just kept spending more and more time in there. And then I kept, I actually did a couple of, um, I actually did a couple of courses and <laughs> every time, every time I was in these courses and I studied a lot of um, Linda Howe's work as well. But every time I was in these courses, it was like, you're here to do this different. Mm. You're here to do this different. Mm -hmm. And again, that was something that at the time, um, at the time I really doubted that. Like I really doubted it. So I needed to have more. I need like, like my ego just needed to have more. I needed to have more proof perhaps, mm -hmm. <laughs> but my ego needed more. And as I, as I continued on, I was, I was just like, whoa, actually, actually no, because it's so different. Every single, every single reading that I've done has been dramatically different than the last. Mm -hmm. And that's just like a confirmation of my knowing that it's like, oh yeah, this gets to be different. Mm, I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing for the listener that might be like, wait, I don't know what Akashic records are, mm -hmm. that maybe we could define that. Would you mind? Yeah. So for myself, defining the Akashic records is our soul's past, present, and future experiences. And it's really, for me, it is a frequency vibrational space that I get to, I get to hang out in, that I get to tootle around in, that I get to ask questions in, um, that I get to receive information from. And what I also know is that every single human has a connection to the Akasha, mm -hmm. you know? So there's also this like beautiful knowing that anyone at any point in time could have the same, um, not the same experience, but a similar experience in being in the records. It's just, it's just how we're perceiving it. Mm, it's so good. It's so good. It's mind-blowingly good. Yeah. And it's going to blow some listeners' minds if this isn't in their normal belief system. Yeah. And there's love for that. So if you're listening and you're going, wait, what? Just hang in there. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hang in there. <laughs> Buckle up. It might get weirder. Who knows? <laughs> we'll never know. Brenda, you are with me. <laughs> <laughs> or you're with me. So, <laughs> right? so either way. Either yeah. way. Yeah. Either yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Mm hmm. Yeah. So good. You know, what's so um, interesting, and this is just coming like to the forefront. I remember in 2018, 2017, 2017, the end of 2017, it was like, it was like Christmas, it was like cold. And I remember it, be, it feeling like, um, like, like seasonal, you know, like, you know, how Christmas has like a seasonal vibe. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I had sat down and I, I found myself inside the records and I was writing and writing and writing and writing and my pages were flipping and I was writing and writing and my pages kept flipping and I sat my book down and I didn't go back to it for a long time. Um, and it was probably, it was shortly before COVID um, that I was called to kind of like start packing my stuff. Mm -hmm. So as I was like packing my stuff, I came across this and I had literally, <laughs> whether you edit this out or not, I have no idea. Um, but I had literally channeled a, like how to read the records. Um, like I'm this not editing this out. Keep going. <laughs> it's so <laughs> like good. This, like this, like this 12 week course. Mm. And you know, it's like so funny. I don't even know where this is coming from. This is one of those things that's like, um, but in that, I just kept remembering like, you're here to do this your way. Like, this is your, like, it's your way. It's like nobody else's way. 
Um, and I wasn't even going anywhere with this apart from, I guess I just needed to name that. I think this is so cool on <laughs> so many levels. Uh, so first of all, the, the recognition that you're led to start packing yeah. that happened to me this week. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess I'm moving. Cause there's, there's certain things that I always do as I get ready to pack up a house. And the first thing is I sweep everything into the room that it goes so that when I start packing, it's in its right room. And I was observing my behavior going, huh, well, that's interesting. So there's a move coming up. <laughs> so that was just like, oh, of course you mentioned that. And then, you know, this, this channeling thing of channeling ideas, that's how my course Yes Academy came to me. It was, it was like, I was sitting on um, my desk and I thought it was just one little tendril of an idea. Right. So I got out a sticky notepad. Well, I filled that sticky notepad and then moved into a notebook with like just download after download after download about what things needed to come through in this. And yeah. Did you ever teach the course? No, <laughs> no, I never taught the course. Mm -mm, I never taught the course. And, um, I've often, like, I've asked myself why I never taught the course. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time I was running a couple of courses already and I was like dripping that content into the course, but this course carries with it a frequency that when the time is right, the course will like be put out there mm -hmm. and it hasn't, there hasn't been that spaciousness for it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's cool. It still feels very alive. Yes. Yes. It definitely feels alive mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. Just like, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Yes. It'll be fun to watch and see. Oh, hello to the puppies. Right. Hello to the dogs. <laughs> hello to the dogs. Uh-huh. Harley. <laughs> <laughs> yes hello to the dogs um yeah but I love that we had this conversation mm. I love mm -hmm. that we had that conversation um yeah it's like so cool it's so cool there's a part of me that remembers um for for your list for your listeners I was a play school teacher and taught play school for 10 years um so like little three to five year olds, you know, and I learned so much from them. Like, oh my gosh, children are our greatest teachers. And I, I remember like, oh, Mars, you should probably look at doing something different. You should look at doing something different. And I had seen, I'm curious if, if you had any experience similar to this prior to COVID. I don't even know why we're having a COVID conversation, but it's come up twice now. Um, there were the, I saw like these tsunami waves coming across the ocean and just like hitting the shoreline and like slowly moving their way inward. Mm -hmm. They were coming from like both sides. And at first I was like, wow, isn't this interesting? And then it was like the more information that I was receiving, it's like, wow, this feels like a big shift mm -hmm. in the frequency of the earth like this is going to affect like humans <laughs> and um it, it was like it kept coming and there were like seven waves of this mm -hmm. and I was actually called to leave my position at the school um December of 2019 just before the school actually closed in March. Oh my gosh. 2020. That's fascinating. <laughs> so sorry. No worries. So, you know, it's interesting. So my medical crisis was in August of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then in October, mm -hmm. wait, that's not true. That's not right. So August of 2019, in December of 2019, I directed my last nutcracker. 
there were like 14 or 18 shows that I had the children's chorus on. And I remember the last show, I was literally so exhausted. I couldn't reach the TV remote. I just laid on the couch mm-hmm. and I, it was like three or four hours before I could get up. And I thought to myself, I need to stop. I need to stop, but I don't know how to get off this hamster wheel. Like mm-hmm. what job do I quit first? How, who am I going to let down? Like, because I had that still complex of, mm-hmm. I, I need to do this. Right. And then when COVID came in March, mm-hmm. March 13th, I remember vividly because I was in Spokane, Washington mm-hmm. at a conference. I'd flown in from Boise to Seattle to Spokane. Yeah. And then <clears throat> on the 12th, everything started to shut down. And so I left my ticket and another course director and I rented a van and we drove from Spokane to Boise because intuitively I knew I could not fly through Seattle. So we drove back and got to Boise and my system recognized right then, this is the turning point. I knew it. So the next day I went on March 13th to the driver's license bureau to get my star card, which is what Americans need to fly for through security. So we got our star cards on March 13th and the whole world shut down the next Monday. And so there was this part of me that was like, you have to move, get in motion, get everything ready, get everything ready. And then I had the intuitive hit to quit, Mm -hmm. but I did not. I kept going Mm -hmm. and it, it was not good for me. I found a part of myself that was not my best self. I, 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 was complaining and negative and really getting to know a part of myself I'd never seen before, not doing something that, or doing something that was misaligned for me. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. So amazing. So amazing. So I'm curious about the seven waves because there was definitely a perception for me that it was wave-like. It would get felt watery. It felt wavy and it felt threatening. Yeah. 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 Um, what I know based off of that was that there were seven waves that came through like in my, in my area. So there were like seven, like seven big waves. Mm. Um, and you know, it, the whole time just kept reminding me that there is so much potency in listening to our intuitive knowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because not only is it within us, it's all encompassing. It's all All around us. Yeah. So it's yeah. just so fascinating. It's so fascinating to me. Um, you know, you know, those moments where you're like, you do something and then you're like, oh, I kind of knew what the outcome of that was going to be. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. And now I have the experience like so great. Right. But it's just so, it's just so fascinating to me how as humans, we're here with like conscious, conscious choice. We're here as sovereign beings. We're here with agency. And yet we rob ourselves of that. Oh my gosh. So much. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And then to expand on that, one thing I noticed in myself was resistance to choosing the thing that I knew was right. Yeah. It took me another year to put down my resistance. Mm -hmm. And then the minute I did, everything shifted. Right. Everything shifted. Yes. Yes. And it's like, it's like the conversations that we get to start having in like a, like a, like an energetically rich place are the conversations around the resistance the conversations around like, what was the piece? Because when we learn what that part is for ourselves, 
that's freedom. That's when we open up a, a, even more. Mm -hmm. That's when we return even like 10% more home every time we have that conversation with ourselves around the resistance. It's not because so oftentimes we get so caught up in, or what I witness is like society gets so caught up in like, oh, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then like, I don't even know how I got here, <laughs> but we're forgetting, <laughs> we're forgetting to like, uh, really be with the juicy pieces yeah. which are the pieces of like, these are the, like, this is what we went through to get to that. Mm -hmm. And then acknowledging the little impulses that come through. Mm -hmm. I think that that's so huge for me. Resistance shows up in repeating impulses that I push down. Yes. Like that's my cue. Oh, you're in resistance. Cause you keep having this thought that you want to do this thing and you're not doing that thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. And then it's like, so from that piece, I was like, oh, okay. Now I'm fully aware. <laughs> I'm fully aware that there is resistance here. And what else? If I'm choosing to stay in the resistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we choosing comfort? which is not actually comfort. It's just familiar mm -hmm. over the expansion, right? Yeah. Because what does the expansion bring with it? Uncertainty, right? But at the end of the day, is it really uncertain? Because it's actually what we've envisioned for ourselves. <laughs> that is the question. And for me, my personal answer is the minute I make a choice, I can feel certainty in my body, but there's a choice that has to be made there. And then the certainty comes without the choice. There's a wobble. Do you find that for yourself too? Yeah. Ah, I love that you name it that way, Brenda. Yeah. I would say yes. 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 I would say yes. There's like a, um, in my own, in my own personal experience over the last little while, there's just like this resistance and I know the resistance and I know like the familiarity of it in my body. And I know what it is in terms of, um, and in regards to, and I, went, and I was, um, in breath work yesterday morning or Sunday morning. What is today? It doesn't really matter. Um, and I was like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. You just need to know. You just need to know that like May 1st is like, that's your shift. Like that's your shift. Whatever happens in the meantime, there was just like this knowing of, okay, like claim that date, mm. like claim that date. Mm -hmm. And for me in the experience in which I'm moving through, it was like, oh, that feels spacious. And that feels like there's so much ease and there's flow and there's just like so much mm, deliciousness. Yeah. And there's and just, choice. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Because I don't need to know the answers. My human can get caught in like my ego can get caught <laughs> needing to know the answers. But if I have the date and then it's just like, oh, yes, I've surrendered to the resistance that was there. And I chose to be with, oh, okay. And in that surrender, there's just like space. Mm hmm there's space for the how to figure itself out. Do you, did you have to learn how to surrender? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. It and, was not natural. And that is not something I have mastered. <laughs> oh, same. It's not something I've mastered yet. It's something that I'm learning to love to do. Mm -hmm. that's my relationship with it yeah. is I'm, I'm really enjoying experimenting and feeling into 
am I fully surrendering? And sometimes I think I am. And then when I ask myself, can you surrender more? There's almost always a next level. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you name that. And there's also this part of me that (laughs) this is probably like my spiciness. There's also this part of me that's like, I actually surrendered to knowing that I get to have this human life. I get to have this human body. Like I get to be fully like mm, in the juiciness of having a human experience. And when I surrendered to that, that was my opportunity to really just be in whatever mess comes of that. Mm, so there, so, so there was such a surrender to so many other mm-hmm. pieces mm-hmm. when I chose like in that moment of like seeing the elevator and like, Oh, whoa, whoa. I had been resisting life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, if I was resisting life, look at how much energy that took Mm -hmm. now that I've like fully just embraced that I'm like human and have like other cool things that I can do like (laughs) I don't I don't need to have resistance so like when you spoke about you know like when I asked myself if I can lean in sometimes I ask myself do I even need to lean in like like do I actually desire to lean into this or is my energy better spent somewhere else doing something else that I really enjoy doing? I love that. I'm going to take that and use it. So my experience is that I was so out of my body for so much of my life Mm -hmm. that being in my body, I noticed that sometimes I'm like gripping. Right. And so then I have to be like, okay, well, I don't have to be, I choose to be. Mm-hmm. Can I be in this human body yeah. and just like relax? Yeah. And surrender. Can I let go a little bit more? And I'm playing in that space. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And for me, I'm like, yeah, I can be in my human body. And if I don't want to, there's like a whole spaces I can go if I don't want to right now. That's right. That's right. And that was like my invitation. That was my invitation into expansion. Mm, mm -hmm. Knowing that I could, it's like, it's like we so oftentimes humans convince themselves. I've done this so many times. I convince myself that it needs to be this way or this way. Right. It's these two choices. (laughs) (laughs) It's like black or white, (laughs) right or wrong. And what if it's what if it actually is just like all of it and it's just a choice that we get to make because mm. mm-hmm. I, I like can be like really here in a human experience like really having this powerful and deep conversation with you right now mm-hmm. and once we're complete I, I can tootle anywhere I want yeah it's and both like the astral realm mm-hmm. that's limitless Absolutely. So I didn't need to like, like there isn't a part of me that needs to be human and like dense in 3D all the time. And that to me was freeing. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I need to be human. I want to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I love, love, love it. It's it's like so powerful when it's like, oh yes, like I get to be like in a human experience. Like I get to feel my hands. I get to touch my face. I get to be with other humans. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it's both, right? It's both. And I always thought it was one or the other. Mm -hmm. So I chose the other because human was not fun. So I chose the other 
Yeah. And was so disassociated from like everything. Mm. Yep. That resonates. That resonates. I'm so glad we had that chat. (laughs) I'm like, wow. (laughs) Me too. Me too. You know, I, I had the, the realization I've known this for most of my life that I have an old soul. I didn't know exactly what that meant when I first started believing it. And the more I play around and, and lean into all the the things and the, the memories that are actually memories coursing through my veins Mm -hmm. from other lifetimes and other, you know, incarnations, the more juicy it becomes for me. And the more relaxed I am about being human, the more relaxed I am about just experiencing life because there's just, there's so much out there. So much, so much. So I was just wondering, like, if somebody's listening to this and they're like, okay, this is the first time I've ever heard a conversation like this. And they're wondering, what's the first thing I can do to come out of my disassociation out of my muscling and efforting through human life, what would, what would be the first thing that you would invite them to try? (sighs) Not the answer I thought. Um, What if there gets to be a permissioning and a self-forgiveness? Mm. Um, I would really get curious around that because what I know to be true through my own experience is that it took really honoring my truth and embracing all of who I am before I was ever even capable of having an association. It came with like really sitting with my heart and really being in the space of like, wow, I am so sorry that I didn't see you. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't see me. Yeah. I like me didn't see me. And from that place, I feel that there's like a really big intuitive guide that happens. There's like a, there's a knowing that starts to exist. There's a like, there's like a um, moment, maybe you find like a favorite, maybe you find like a song that just lands in your body and can allow you the spaciousness to be able to forgive yourself. Um, Maybe there's like writing that you get to do. Maybe there's voice noting, like you get to share an actual message with yourself that you get to listen back. Maybe there's a meditation that just aligns for you. And of course, Brenda, you and I both know this, doing somatic work, it's like we get to get into our body with like breath we Mm -hmm. get to get there with sound we get to get there with movement and it's when we're really in the physicalness of our body that we can really start to I'll speak to my own experience that I could really start to forgive myself Mm -hmm. for abandoning my body yes oh that resonates for me perfectly said I had done a lot of healing work a lot of healing work. I was a healer for many years before I found breath work and the journey that I have gone through and the layers that I've peeled away through the, the breath work and the somatic experiencing are just there. People wouldn't believe me if I tried to explain it, but they can see it. Exactly. Yeah. And they can feel it. Yeah. They can feel it. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mars, what do you think is something you either did or didn't do that ultimately led you to your yes filled life? <sighs> Brenda, I just got goosebumps. Mm-hmm. 
when I said yes to pause, it didn't make any sense. I was in a shitty marriage. I don't know if I can say that, but that's where I was. And I said yes. And there wasn't anything in my body that could tell me otherwise. Mm. And that was like my, my, this is my future self decision. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2012, it was a, in 2012, I thought I caught that. Sorry. In 2012, it was my, my elevator moment. It was my elevator moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, so good. You said yes, without having to understand why it was a yes, just understanding that it felt like a yes. Exactly. Oh, it's exactly. so good. Mm -hmm. I have loved this conversation. It's so juicy. We've gone so many different directions. That's what happens when, that's what happens <laughs> when we get together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank oh. you for being here. Thank you for sharing your heart. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's Maybe such an honor to share space with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing what you do, Brenda. I Thank you. It. Oh my gosh. I appreciate you. Mm, yes. And you get to have like an amazing rest of your day and you get to hug someone for 17 seconds. <laughs> yes. All uh, the good things. All the yeah. good things. Thank you, Mars. Thank you. Isn't she awesome? Oh my goodness. Now, I don't know if you picked up on the thing inside the episode that included a little bit of foreshadowing, but remember when Marcia and I were talking about moving and how there was just something that she knew that meant she was moving. And then I shared that the very day that we'd recorded or that week that I was having like something happen around moving. Well, I have just decided to take the leap and go for a dream of mine that has been in my mind for several years. And that's to live a life traveling full-time, living in Airbnbs around everywhere. And so I'm so excited <laughs> that that is happening like in a month. Can you believe it? In a month. So I'll keep you posted. I'll take you along with me on the journey. I'm sure there's there's a journey here. I'm titrating this experience, meaning I'm going as slow as I need to go by staying in the Portland area for now through the summer, um, just as I kind of get used to things and get used to the idea of not having a permanent home, at least for now. And someone in my dance class was asking me, how long are you going to do that? And I said, well, until it doesn't feel like fun. So I'll tell you the same thing, because that is many people's first question, like, how long do you plan to do that? And the answer is, I don't know. I'm going to do it until it doesn't feel fun or until something else lands. So I'll keep you posted. One of my favorite things about this episode is the way that Mars allows and enables all experience to be valid. And I so appreciate about her. That's the way that she shows up in every single capacity that I've ever experienced her, whether it's at a retreat or at a pause breathwork event in the somatic coaching program. She's just as genuine as she can be. And I hope that you'll give her a follow over on Instagram. She's there at marcy.nickirk. Gosh, I hope I'm saying her last name correctly. And be sure you check out Pause Breathwork. I put a link in the show notes for you to get information on what it might include to become a breathwork facilitator and where you can meet the team that Mars works with and works for. Don't forget to register for the Yes to Me Challenge coming up March 14th, not March, oh my goodness, May 14th, May 15th, and May 17th by going to brendawinkle.com forward slash yes to me. Thank you so much for listening to your guest of life. It means more to me than I can even say. And if you could do me a favor, I would be so grateful if you would go give the podcast a rating and review wherever you are listening right now. I think the Apple podcast is the only place you can leave a review, but you can leave ratings on all the podcasting platforms. And it would just mean so much if you would be willing to do that. Thank you for listening. Bye for now. Until next time.